The Nikon ZFC, a really fancy looking camera, but of course, is it any good? Well, I've been using this camera almost exclusively over the last few weeks. In this video, it's time to let you know my thoughts. Welcome to the Photogenius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Welcome to my channel where I like to post regular photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks, and occasionally I do gear reviews just like this one. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Now this is my Nikon ZFC. This video is not sponsored by Nikon and Nikon did not lend me a camera to test and try. Instead, I purchased this camera with my own money, but did I make a good choice? Well, in this video, you're gonna find out because I'm gonna be sharing some images with you that I've taken over the past few weeks. And I wanna tell you my thoughts after using the ZFC. Now I want to start by explaining why I purchased this camera in the first place when I'm not short of cameras. I've got a Nikon Z6, I'm using it to record this video. That's a full frame mirrorless camera. I've got a bunch of Nikon DSLR cameras as well, yet I've still brought another camera. Well, there's a reason behind it, let me explain. Now I do have to admit to being slightly seduced by the look of the Nikon ZFC. After all, I think it's a really great looking camera, but the reasons for buying it are more practical based. Now there's two main reasons, and number one is the flip out screen. Now, as you know, I make videos for you guys on YouTube. I want my videos to be educational, informative. I want the quality to be good as well. Now, when I started recording videos for YouTube, I was using this, the Canon 80D, great camera, has a flip out screen. Flip out screen, very useful because I can keep an eye on my recording, I can check composition, I can make sure I'm in focus, all those things by using the flip out screen. Now, I did upgrade my camera and hopefully some of you would have noticed an improvement in the quality of my videos when I purchased the Nikon Z6. Now this is a full frame mirrorless camera. It's a beast of a camera and I absolutely love it, but it doesn't have a flip out screen. Instead, it has what I think they call a tilt screen. Now, I really missed the flip out screen. So that's one of the reasons why I bought the ZFC, which by the way, I'm now using to record this video. If I look off camera, I can see at a quick glance that the camera's recording, that the audio levels are good, that I'm in focus, all the essential stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I bought this camera. Now, the other reason is a bit more, again, practical based, and it's just the size of the camera. Sometimes when I'm on location, I need to get some really good video, and this is a big camera to carry around, whereas the ZFC is a bit more lighter and smaller, and just a bit more practical. With the addition of the ZFC, there is currently seven cameras in the Nikon Z range, with only the Z50 and the ZFC featuring cropped APS-C sensors. Now, when the Nikon ZFC was first announced, it did get a lot of attention, particularly because of the look and the styling of the camera. Nikon have dug into their past and created a camera that is reminiscent of their FM2 film camera that was so popular in the late 70s and early 80s. With its faux leather and silver finish, the round viewfinder and chunky dials for changing ISO and shutter speed, the camera really looks like a classic. And it's all about the details. Even the Nikon logo engraved on the front of the camera is in the classic font of the earlier Nikon cameras. Now when choosing the camera, I went for the black and silver body, which has that really cool vintage look. But for a limited time, Nikon are also offering this camera in a range of really cool funky colors, which I think is a great idea. Now, whilst on the outside, this camera looks really old school, under the hood, it's packed with features. The Nikon ZFC has all the bells and whistles you would expect to find in a mid-level mirrorless camera. The layout of the ZFC makes it incredibly easy to use with a rotary dial on the top of the camera for changing the shutter speed. There's a command dial on the front if you wish to change your aperture value. Over to the left on the top of the body you can change your ISO and there's also a dial for adjusting exposure compensation that also works in the auto mode. If you're already a Nikon DSLR user, then you're gonna find this camera easy to navigate with the I button giving you quick access to essential functions like image quality, white balance, focus modes, vibration reduction, and more. 
The iMenu can also be customized to suit your needs. For example, I've added the remote option. The Nikon MLL7 remote is an optional extra, but I'm giving it a special mention simply because it is so good. Using the remote, you can take photos, start video recording, playback images or video and more. It's a must have accessory that only works with the ZFC, the Nikon Z50 and a handful of Corpix cameras. Now, a really neat feature of the Nikon ZFC is the ability to do really long exposures of up to 900 seconds or 15 minutes without needing to use the bulb mode. Now, to do this, you select the one third step option on the shutter speed dial, and then you turn the command dial on the back of the camera to the left. Most cameras will stop at 30 seconds, but the Nikon ZFC just keeps going. So using the rotary dials on the top of the camera, you can easily see at a glance what your ISO is set to, what your shutter speed is. And Nikon have also included a tiny little LCD panel on the top of the camera that displays the aperture value. Now, whilst this is a neat little touch, personally, I found it just a bit small and hard to see, particularly if shooting outside on a bright day. So what I think would have been really great is if it was backlit, like the panels we see on the top of the Nikon Z6 or Z7. On the bottom of the camera, you will find a slot for an SD card, as well as space for a battery. Now the battery cover is a little bit flimsy. And one of the issues I found is that if you attach a QR plate for using a tripod, you may have trouble opening the battery compartment door. On the side of the camera behind a rubber cover is an HDMI output, a USB-C port, which is really handy for charging the camera either on the go or in use, plus a mic input if you want to connect an external mic and improve your audio recording. Now, if you enjoy watching my videos and you would like to support both myself and this channel, then please consider checking out Photo Genius on Patreon. As well as directly supporting me, Patreon members enjoy benefits and unlock exclusive content such as blog posts, photos, behind the scenes videos and more. Choose a membership level that best suits you and you will be helping me create better videos so that I can help you take better photos. Want to know more? Visit patreon.com forward slash photo genius. There's also a link below this video. So now I want to show you a selection of images that I've taken with the Nikon ZFC. When testing gear, I think it's really important to not just shoot a variety of subjects, but also see how it performs under different lighting conditions. The brightest of days, the first light of day, and long after the sun has set. The ZFC has been an all round great performer. Now I just want to quickly talk about lens options. Now, some of the images I'm going to show you in this video were taken with the Nikon ZFC and the lenses that came supplied with the camera. Some of the images were taken with this, this Viltrox lens. I've done a separate video about this and I'll put a link up here so you can check it out. Now, currently there aren't many dedicated DX crop sensor lenses designed for the Nikon ZFC or the Nikon Z50. Of course, that will change. And to me, I don't see it as being a major issue. Let me tell you why. At the time of recording this video, there are only three dedicated Nikon Z lenses designed for the DX crop sensor cameras. But any Z mount lens will fit the ZFC and there are now over 20 in the range with more to be added. There are also some excellent third party lenses from the likes of Viltrox and Samyang and furthermore using the FTZ adapter you can also use any of the older F mount lenses and the options here are huge. So now let's take a look at some more images that I've taken with the Nikon ZFC. Now I really love taking photos during the golden hour. I love the warm tones and the quality of light as the sun begins to set. These pelicans are enjoying the last light of the day and this water dragon was taken at the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. The Brisbane Festival is an annual event and is a mecca for photographers. I was really happy with this shot taken using the 50 to 250 millimeter telephoto lens. Now here I'm using a five second exposure to capture this firework display and by contrast a faster shutter speed to freeze the action with these surfing shots. 
So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the reasons I've got the ZFC is because of the screen, which can flip out like so. Very useful when recording videos and you're in front of the camera. But of course, another feature of this screen is that you can reverse it and fold it in to protect the screen from getting damaged. And actually, I've been using the camera to take still photos with the screen folded in. Now this might seem a bit strange. How do I know what the camera's doing if I can't look at the screen? Well, with mirrorless cameras, and this of course is a mirrorless camera, through the viewfinder you have what is called an electronic viewfinder. Effectively, it's like a smaller version of the screen. So looking through the viewfinder, I can not just compose my photos and take my photos, I can also play back my images and view them. I can also go into the menu and change camera settings, all without taking the camera away from from my eye. And this is one of the things that really sets mirrorless cameras apart from the DSLR cameras. It's a really cool feature. Now hopefully based on the images I've shared with you in this video, you will agree with me that the Nikon ZFC is actually a really great stills camera. But what about video? Remember one of the reasons why I bought this camera is to use it for video. In fact I'm using it now, I've switched back to using the ZFC. Well let's take a look at some video clips. I've recorded a handful of tutorials using the ZFC and it's now my number one camera for creating YouTube videos. Outside of the studio, I've also shot some wildlife and also an evening event under low light with great results. Now before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about the things I like the most as well as the things I like the least about the Nikon ZFC. Now there's not really much not to like about the Nikon ZFC. The lack of grip can make the camera tricky to hold. The aperture LCD display could be better and I would really like to be able to swap batteries without removing the tripod plate. However, there certainly is plenty to like about the ZFC, as well as the obvious good looks, charging via USB-C on the go, the image quality and flip out LCD. These are just some of the reasons to really enjoy using this camera. So I've really enjoyed using the Nikon ZFC over the past few weeks, both as a stills camera for taking photos, as well as a video camera. It's a great looking camera and I absolutely love the retro look, but it's also a camera that has that fun factor and it's actually a joy to use as well and a camera that's easy to navigate around. Now I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this video and if you've enjoyed this review it would really help if you give it a thumbs up, it helps the videos get noticed which in turn helps the channel grow. Now I try to put out new videos every single week so if you're not already subscribed consider subscribing and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.